to take these glasses off. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to JK. Listen, if you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, please subscribe. Click the bell, like, comment, share, do the absolute most. I would love that. Thank you so much for joining us. As you can see in the title down below, I'm doing a Q&A. So I put up an Instagram post the other day to do a um, Q&A on just women related issues, anything from uh, pregnancy, uh, dealing with other women, um, you know, whatever, contraceptives, anything. So I did get a couple of questions and uh, I'm definitely not going to be able to get through all of them. So what I do want to say is definitely put some more questions down below because I want these Q and A's to be frequent so that we can interact, exchange, share valuable information and knowledge in the comment section down below. And if there are more questions in the comment section down below, I'll do another Q and A and we'll keep going that way because I think, um, exchanging and interact interacting is very, very important, especially with topics like these of this nature. So yeah, see, sometimes I might need my, my glasses just, uh, when I look at my phone, I need my glasses. Okay. Lavender says <laughs> in your diet or healthy living, do you snack often? And if so, what are your snacks? Of course I snack. I love to snack. This is another thing that I want to mention is that as much as I am trying to eat healthy and trying to live healthier and adopt healthy, um, you know, eating methods and things like that. I do also eat junk food from time to time. I do eat burgers and chips. I do eat pizzas, not so often the pizzas, but uh, burgers and chips, whatever. I do eat, I, I do drink cold drink every now and again and that kind of thing. But when I'm healthy snacking, I pulled out some of the snacks that I have downstairs. Uh, but um, to start off, I love to snack on things like plain yogurt. I love to start with maybe like some blueberries, just but a really small portion of plain yogurt and blueberries. I snack on a fruit. Uh, I love nectarines. I am absolutely in love with nectarines. I love bananas. Um, anything, man. But if I am snacking on other things, one of my favorite snacks are these. These are the Woolies Spicy Salami Sticks. I was introduced to these by my sister. Absolutely love them. I'll have maybe two or three of those when I'm snacking. If not, I will have these. I talk about these in one of my healthy eating uh, videos where I talk about what I snack on. I think it's a Q&A. Uh, I'll link it down below. Uh, I love to snack on the Woolies snack bars which this one is one of my favorite ones. It's got coconut, pineapple, and mango. I don't often gravitate to this one because of the pineapple and mango. So things that are really sweet, 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 for me, I don't really snack too much on. And one of my favorites are these to snack on. These are the Woolies multi-grain multi rye crisp bread. I love to take out one or two of these when I'm snacking with maybe some green tea, maybe put a bit of peanut butter or almond butter on there and just a little bit of bananas and I snack on that. She also says, when do you think is the right time to take supplements for the gym and is it necessary? I just want your opinion. Now, I feel like this is something that I can't answer myself. I feel like you would need to consult a doctor on something like this or even consult a trainer or somebody who is qualified to, um, you know, give you a proper and a, um, fact-based response. However, for me, I do take supplements for the gym, uh, one kind of supplement. And the reason why I take this one supplement is because um, I, I almost said the supplement is called CM29. <laughs> see something but uh, it's a joint supplement and because of my knee surgery and the fact that I'm getting older and the fact that I train I muscle train as well um, I definitely do take a supplement and I take it in the evening every single uh, day sometimes or maybe sometimes even maybe like five times a week not every single day it really really helps in terms of strengthening my joints especially when I am training so I do recommend that you speak to someone about this especially a doctor um, and somebody who's trained for this so that they can rec recommend the correct supplements for you. I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Mm. How can I not be afraid of following my dreams? Listen, 
there's a saying that says if you're if if you're mm, what there's a saying that says if your dreams don't scare you they're not big enough so at the end of the day you are going to be afraid oh the butterflies are migrating so i'm looking outside the window and there's just white butterflies it's that time of the year where they're migrating it's beautiful um they are um your dreams should scare you so if if they don't scare you they're not big enough everybody who has a dream often is very very afraid to execute because they don't know how to execute or how to move forward you just have to take the leap and take the risk it is one of the biggest things that prohibits us from living our best lives as they say um, uh, because we are afraid and fear at the end of the day is not going to get you where you want to be as a where you would like to be um, as a human being dependent on your dreams and whatever but you just have to go for it whether you where whether they they scare you they should scare you um just take the risk take the leap jump and do it just do it nike okay <laughs> the next one is uh i am smazaza um she says dealing with unemployment while your friends are winning listen at the end of the day we're not going to all um win at the same time but just because you are dealing with unemployment or someone is dealing with unemployment and watching your friends succeed, it is, it is, it's tough. It's tough. I can imagine that it is tough. I've been in this position. I know that it is tough. Um, but the thing is, you just have to keep going. You have to keep looking for that job if you're unemployed. Put yourself out there. You know how many people have received jobs from Twitter, from Twitter. Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to do things that are outside of your comfort zone to try and win yourself. Um, at the end of the day, if your friends are winning, they are winning. They are winning. That is their life. Do not try and make their story your story. You need to be able to figure out a way in which you can win and getting out of your comfort zone, talking to people, mingling with people, go to that specific job that you want or whatever, drop your CV outside at the reception area, just drop it, leave it there, you know, just apply for jobs, just, but at the end of the day, do not be so consumed with despondency because you're watching other people win that it, it stifles what you can do for your life to create your win you have to create your win you have to uh, uh, jump out of the box you need to think out of the box with um in terms of creating your win so um and keep thinking and praying about it and speak things into existence uh, into existence um manifest them into existence i promise you I promise you your turn will come everybody's turn comes everybody's turn comes you're not the only one Okay. What do you recommend for getting rid of pubic hair? Now, I am not a subscriber of <laughs> subscriber. I'm not a subscriber of the 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 hair removal where you apply on um, sort of like a cream and then you wait a while and whatever. It's too close to the vagina for me. You know, it's too close. Uh, I do subscribe to waxing. Definitely do subscribe to waxing. I think it's great, especially for when you are someone who struggles with ingrown hairs. Waxing really, really helps. Um, I also, yay, shaving stick also really, really helps as well. Um, uh, but one of the best ones for me is definitely recommending waxing. Um, and yeah. I hope that helps. How do you keep your vagina healthy? Now, for me, I call vagina petunia because vagina is just oh, the term in itself is oh, the word. Um, uh, how do I keep my vagina healthy? This leads on to another couple of questions about how do we clean it and whatever. Um, and, and what I think about... Um, intimate washes. I'm going to answer that all in one, one, one space, one bracket, one everything. Um, personally for me, I do not have a problem with intimate washes. I do not have a problem with mild soaps. Some people use Dove for intimate washing. It, it is a mild soap. For me personally, I use an intimate wash. So this is Gynagod. I had to pull this out of my shower, so it's a little bit wet, but, um, this is Gynagod everyday intimate wash and i've spoken about this in my feminine hygiene video which i will also link down below it's got an ideal ph of 4.5 which is not bad not 
not bad for your vagina so you can use it every single day for your petunia um basically this the the, the issue is uh obgyns and uh doctors that deal with this kind of part of you know um they they always say that there's not a problem with using an intimate wash or using a mild soap you are washing the external part of the vagina so you're not washing the internal part they have a problem with that it's the vagina has its own way of cleaning itself there are cells within the vagina that regenerate every single day so they die every single day and they regenerate every single day you can read up on this stuff i read up on this stuff and when they die they have to come out of your vagina right so they come out in the form of discharge so um your vagina is a basically a wonderful wonderful uh a thing that uh, cleans itself I don't know I was about to say product I really was <laughs> that cleans itself so you really don't have to do much some people say just use water that's fine but for me personally I like intimate washes because I realized that when I use just water um, the, 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 there's a scent that I'm not too particularly fond of so when I use an intimate wash every single day that keeps it away it keeps it at bay um, and uh, yeah you can also keep your vagina clean by using intimate um, wipes as well uh, I like the Lilette's ones I like the the ones I just showed you now the gynecod ones as well so really it is up to you it is up to what you your preference would be uh, what you would like to use um, but a lot of the time what I do not recommend is harsh soaps like yobo life boy bo laxi bo ing they do not recommend these kinds of soaps and also things like taking baths and with bath salts and things like that um and foam washes not entirely a good idea to soak your vagina in, in a bath that's got all that stuff so i hope that one helps um but uh what was the question that is how i keep my vagina healthy i shave i do not like to uh shave or wax i do not like to have hair there because hair traps dust debris grass i'm just kidding how do i feel positive about my body lindy West says how do i feel positive about my body especially when it's time for intimacy you know we all have certain things about our body especially as women that we do not like we do not like the rolls on our um, love handles we do not like our arms i have an issue with these kinds of arms um but at the end of the day i feel like intimacy especially with somebody who cares about you and that you care about they don't care about that that's one thing you need to understand they do not care about whether you are hey your love handles and your whatever no the moment is more more than how you look um what you can do to boost your self-confidence for intimacy you can definitely wear underwear that you love and that looks good on you wear something lacy wear something sexy you know um take a long bath just have a, a, a little bit of me time have a glass of wine blah 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 set yourself up for that mood where you are comfortable um definitely the most important thing is do the zang zang with somebody you are comfortable with because when you are comfortable with that person it's very it's highly unlikely that you're going to be wondering that oh what do they think how are they feeling about this blah 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 what do they think about my love handles they love them the one thing you need to understand is that they love your love handles because they're loving on you in that moment so try not to think about it but if you do wear something that you feel good in wear something satiny silky you know that you will that will make you feel good about how you look olaf said which would you say is the best and most effective form of contraception so now the thing is with this there are so many types of contraceptive methods there are internal ones there are external ones there are hormonal ones there are blah 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 you can read up on all this stuff but the ones that i will mention today are the ones that are most commonly uh um the ones that are most commonly used the the top four that they often talk about uh that are very very highly effective are known as the locks l-a-r-c-s the locks 
the locks include so the locks include the depot which is the depot injection which gets injected into your arm and lasts 12 weeks so basically three months every time a lot of women like it but um it, it's an older method of contraception contraception a lot of women like it but uh complain about massive massive weight gain so you know if if weight gain is a thing that you're not keen on i don't suggest the depot so the next two that are commonly known of is the uh iud's which are one of them is the morena which is inserted into your uterus it's in the shape of a t it's a plastic sort of device and it's in the shape of a t and is inserted into your uterus that can sit in your uterus for about five years then the other one is known as the copper iud and it is also inserted into your uterus and can last anywhere between five and ten years so these are have a 99 percent chance of being effective especially if you use them correctly the other one is known as a subdermal implant which is known as uh the next plan on if i'm not it mistaken. is it's sort of it's a small size of a hair grip also inserted with local anesthetic into your arm and that sits there for i think five years as well I don't, I can't quite recall, but it sits in your upper arm. No, it's not five years. It's a much shorter space of time, but um, that is one of them. Another one is, of course, the pill, being on the pill. Uh, condoms, which also have um, used correctly, a 99 Condoms have an 82%. The pill has a 99% uh, effectiveness rating. Um, what else? Uh, injection. There's just a lot of... The, please, they can, cannot, the pull-out method cannot be seen as a con contraceptive. <laughs> it can't, please. Okay, there's other things like the rings and the patches. It really is up to you and up to your schedule and how you run your life and whatever, what would best work for you. But definitely those ones, really, really good. Look up the locks. The pill is really good as well. I'm on the pill. Um, and you know when used correctly is very very highly effective condoms are great as well but things like the the locks and the the um the, the the pill and whatever do not prevent stds condoms prevent stds not the other ones so definitely read up on those kinds of whoops definitely read up on those kinds of things and it is definitely up to you which one would work the best all right i think the last one because i've got so many i think the last one would be what's your take on abortion now religion is a big part of my life and because of my religion and whatever one would think that i would say no to abortion no i personally feel like it is your body it is your body we live in different times right now where so many things happen you can be pregnant by so many reasons you can be pregnant because you know you're in a loving relationship you fall pregnant but you're not ready for the child you can be pregnant unfortunately via things like rape and and i just feel like you need to have consent and d decide on what you want for your body i feel like you have every right and consent over your body what happens with it and for your life so if you're not ready for a child you do what you need to do i don't see why people should feel like they have an opinion on what you should do with your body and especially if you know that you you know that you will i'm not ready for this so how am i ever going to connect with this child or how am i ever going to um you know i've been raped how am i going to connect with this child because maybe you'll just see the rape and instead of seeing just a child whatever you there's just so many that go so many things that go into uh being pregnant and having a child and what have you that if you're not ready for it you need to have absolutely every single hundred percent right to decide whether you want to keep the child or not so that is where i stand on abortion i feel like it is your choice if you want to have an abortion it is your choice if you do not keep the child it is your choice but no one and nothing should ever be able to take that away from you that's all i'm saying
That's all I'm saying. All right. I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of more questions and I'm thinking of doing a part two to this Q&A. If you want us to do a part two and make this these kinds of Q&As frequent, because I think they are great, definitely put your questions down below. Comment down below. Interact. If there are other types of contraceptive methods that have worked for you, which ones haven't worked for you, interact with everybody. Let's comment. Let's teach each other, let's teach each other new things. Um, and yeah, let's learn more from one another. I hope you like this Q&A and I'm going to go now. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.